I'd like to call this regular governing board meeting of the Lammersville Unified School District Board of Education to order at 7.01. I'd like to remind everyone that this meeting is being recorded. Please silence or turn off your cell phones at this time. And I would like to invite um, Principal of Altamont Elementary forward to lead us in the Pledge of Allegiance. Ready, begin. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Thank you and welcome Principal Yeager. Thank you for having us, members of the board, Trustee Goodrich, Trustee Clements, Trustee Balzarini, President Pombo, uh, Trustee Lampel, Superintendent Dr. Nicholas, CBO Kaiser, and Executive Assistant Balzarini. It's a pleasure to be here this evening, and I am uh, very excited and proud to bring along with myself four members of the Altamont STEM Club, and they're excited to uh, come up and talk a little bit about their experiences in STEM Club and what they're doing. So without further ado, I'm going to introduce our students and I would like to call up first, we're gonna have Kirit Moniker. Can you please come up, Kirit? And please tell us what you have here, how it works and what you've learned in STEM Club. I have a catapult, so you keep one object in the spoon, and then you hold the bottom and leave it, and then it launches out, and then it flies. Cool. What have you launched out of there? Uh, a, a razor. Okay. <laughs> and, and Kareet, how much fun have you had in STEM Club this year? A lot. <laughs> Is it one of the favorite things you've done at Altamont? No. <laughs> okay. What's better than STEM Club? Drawing. Drawing. Okay, that's tough to compete with. All right, thank you very much, Creed. And next, I would like to call up his sister. This is Perna Moniker. I'm going to tell you about Ozobots. An Ozobot is a pre programmed robot to. So we can code what's them to tell what to do. And here there it's a there's a track so it can go and it recognizes four colors. And then with the four colors we make code and the track is made with black and we press the button on the side and then you leave it and then it goes on the track. <laughs> Binary coding is a computer, is a language that a computer knows and you need and it uses the numbers zero and one. I use boxes to represent the numbers and the colored boxes represent ones and the white boxes represent zero and I d use binary code to sh write Altamont Panthers. So when you do the code, you do it with a with an iPad, is that right? No, you oh. write it out. Oh, you write it out. Mm -hmm. And then how do you program the? I'm sorry, Autobot is that what it's called? Autobot. Autobot. We, we use colors to make a code. Oh, and it just records it. Oh, okay. Very cool. Nice job. Thank you. Thank you very much, uh, Perna. Next, I would like to call up our other brother-sister pair, and we'll start with Milan Parsa. Please come on up, Milan, and tell us about what you've been doing in STEM Club. Um, I was, so I am doing another type of coding. It's called Scratch Junior, 
and it's how you code characters. So this wizard, I put code blocks and I coded it to go one step back, two steps forward, jump four times and shrink itself down. So then I press there, then I'll shrink itself down. And then I can also code this dragon. So I press start and then it goes forward, another time forward, up, and it restarts on the place that it started. And then you could use many types of blocks. So you could use, you could make it say stuff like hi or sentences, or you could make it sing songs. So you could go to different worlds, like this one, and then you could go to different um, codes. So you could code this cat. He's right behind the dragon. Um, I'm not sure if I did a code for that. Milan, that's pretty awesome. That's like, um, when I was a kid, I just got to play the video games. You get to code them. That's amazing. Any questions for Milan? Milan, how long did it take you to write the code to have that character move forward and jump? A couple minutes. A couple minutes. Probably take me a And last but certainly not least, we will conclude with Milan's sister, Layla Parson. This is a Ozobot. It, it codes on paper and you, and you use colors. And you do it on Ozoblock on an iPad. So Layla, I believe Trustee Balzarini asked, how do you get the code into the Ozobot? Are you saying that you program it into the iPad after you make the colors in the blocks? You can get paper and get blue, green, black, and red, and then code the colors that you would want. Do you type those codes into an iPad? Yeah. OK, very good. Is there anything else you'd like to say about our STEM club? No. OK, thank you very much. And I would also like to give a big thank you to um, our STEM club teacher and advisor, Mrs. Carolyn Rodriguez. Um, I would like to excuse Mrs. Rodriguez this evening. Um, she has been um, experiencing uh, a lot of uh, challenges lately and could not be here this evening. So we wish her the best and um, thank you so much for having us and, and listening to our presentation of our wonderful students. Thank you, Altamont students. And if you would like to leave at this time you're welcome to do that I know you probably have homework to do at home so if you'd like to leave you may if you'd like to stay and watch our meeting you're certainly welcome to do that as well nice job you guys great job thanks guys I also brought my mom with me by the way I think we're good Roll call, please. Matthew Balzarini. Here. Colin Clements. Here. Ann Goodrich. Here. Sharon Lampell. Here. David Pombo. Here. Simran Gunsey. Here. Um, recognition, AMC 1012 math competition winners. I'd like to uh, invite Assistant Superintendent Heather Sherburn to uh, honor our uh, awardees. And then when we get them called up, we'll have the board come down. We'll take a quick picture.
Good evening, Mr. President and trustees. It is my pleasure to be able to offer uh, awards and recognize two students who participated in our AMC Math 1012 competition. Uh, if you'll remember, we honored ooh, 15 or so students who were in the 6-8 the competition earlier. And um, we had in total about eight students, I think, who competed in the 10-12 competition. We have two students to recognize tonight as the winners for their respective grade levels. So I'd like to call up Pranav A. Karche. Congratulations. Right. No, we stand right over here. And Sam Rita Shaikh. I'll be right over here too. Which one's ten and which one's twelve? Item five, approval and or corrections to the agenda. There are none. Move to approve the agenda. Second. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Opposed? Motion carries. Item six, committee reports. District Advisory Committee. Uh, nothing to report. English Language Advisory Committee. We have not had a meeting since the last board meeting, but there is an extra special meeting being added to our agenda on March 29th at 6.30 at Lammersville Elementary. Thank you. Education Extracurricular Committee. Nothing to report. Our next meeting is April 24th. And the Facilities Committee, nothing to report. And our next meeting is May 17th at 6.30 here in the boardroom. Um, Policy Committee. Uh, we have a new batch coming that we're going to review and uh, make recommendations for the board. Thank you. Safety Committee. Safety Committee met today. Uh, I'd like to thank all the administrators for being present. We had a very productive meeting. Um, we start off with a presentation from a consultant that was hired by the Community Services District who came in and did some uh, traffic studies. And the, uh, the outcome, at least for our district, is going to be that the CSD approves some uh, safety measures that are going to be taking place that will affect Wickland and Bethany schools. Um, there's going to be additional signage, um, and they're going to enhance the crosswalk safety. So good news for us, and thank you to the CSD for doing that. And they're also going to add some red zones for to assist with crossing. Uh, the committee also reviewed site plans. Every campus brought their site plan, and we all... Uh, rotated through and looked at all the plans, a lot of good information. Uh, and then we had, had a tabletop exercise. All the school administrators ran through an exercise uh, with the assistance of our school resource deputy and the Mount House Fire Department, who were uh, all present. Um, lots of discussion in regarding the tabletop and uh, lessons learned that will be taken back into the sites. Thank you, Mr. Harrison, for all the work on the committee. Appreciate it. Thank you. Um, Wellness Committee, I have... Nothing to report other than the fact that this week, yesterday, today, and tomorrow, the schools are all having their farmer's markets. So if any of the board members haven't <coughs> made it out yet and have time tomorrow, I believe it's, there are two schools tomorrow, Wickland, or Bethany and Quest, I think. And I know Quest does it all day, and, and Bethany's only in the morning, I believe. I apologize for that. I did not write that in my report. But our next um, our next meeting is scheduled for April 11th here in the board meeting. 
Ah, thank you, sir. Uh, yes, Bethany from 8.30 to noon and Cuesta from 8.45 to 2.10. Thank you. Um, governing board reports. Madam Student Trustee Gunsey. So currently we are in the middle of a spirit week, which is Star Wars themed for our spring rally, which is an exciting rally coming up on Friday. Once again, today we had the therapy dogs visit. In general, that program has definitely been a success and a student favorite. The sign-up sheet literally fills up within the first hour of it being held online, which is always great. Concert Choir also had their first concert in the beautiful new theater last Friday, and it was a complete success. BSU had their staff versus student game, which sadly the staff won. And this was three weeks ago. However, I wasn't here, so I would like to mention it. That speech and debate had national qualifiers and many uh, went to national qualifiers and many Manhouse students placed and will be going to nationals in June, which is really exciting. So, yeah. Very nice. Thank you. Trustee Goodrich. Uh, due to recent illness, I haven't been too busy, um, but... I was able to attend the WASC visit at Mountain House High School both on March 18th and then again today to hear the report. Um, it was very interesting, um, very uh, good news, I think, overall. Uh, it sounds like our high school is headed in the right direction. Um, they had lots of great things to say about the high school, um, programming and curriculum and staff culture. So um, overall, it sounded like a really uh, positive uh, report. Thank you. Trustee Clements. I was sick and not able to attend the last board meeting. Um, subsequent to my last report in um, with many of my fellow board members, I did attend uh, the funeral service for uh, Bill Lebo, um, a great asset to the district and will be missed. I also attended the memorial service for Jack, Jacqueline Aguilar, who attended our high school and graduated less than a year ago. Um, she was one of my wife's favorite student assistants in the library. Um, and so I did know her, and she was taken from us way too soon. Absolutely. She was a great person. Um, uh, like Trustee Goodrich, I attended the uh, WASC meeting um, on Sunday as well as the uh, report in today. Um, and I won't go into the details. I'll just echo um, uh, Trustee Goodrich's comments. Um, it sounded very positive, no surprises. And I also wanted to thank district staff and high school staff for all the effort putting that together. I know it's critical. I know that you had to do it, but thank you very much for doing it. Great job. Um, I also visited Lammersville Elementary. Um, I'm very excited because it's my first time being there since all the changes and getting a tour of that and, and talking to some children. And by the way, I wanted to say thank you to uh, Mrs. Busatel for um, putting it together at somewhat last minute notice. I really appreciated her accommodating my schedule. Um, but I did make it clear, Dr. Nicholas, that if it was inconvenient in any way, she should just tell me no. Um, but um, had a great time um, seeing the school and seeing it's a completely different school than it was. Absolutely. And uh, the team there has done just an excellent job and the students are ecstatic about the technology, the Ozobots. Um, they all wanted to tell me about that, and, and uh, I'm sure they could program circles around me. Um, <laughs> I think one of them actually challenged me, or maybe it was uh, Mrs. Bustatil that challenged me, but I, I didn't accept the challenge. Anyway, it was, a, it was great. I also attended um, Quest Elementary for a very brief visit. Um, did not manage to uh, go into any classrooms, but did take a look at uh, the facilities and such. Um, and so I wanted to thank the team there for allowing me on campus. That's it, sir. Thank you. Trustee Belzerini. Uh, Tuesday, I was in Sacramento for the annual CSBA Legislative Action Day. I met with uh, Senator Galgiani's staff, uh, and also I met with Assemblymember Eggman. Uh, we discussed CSBA's um, latest priority, uh, the fight for full and fair funding which is soon going to become uh, a legislative uh, issue that's going to go to the floor. Uh, we also, I spent a significant amount of time speaking to uh, both offices about Prop 51 and the effects that Prop 51 has on our district. Uh, and then um, Saturday I was in Sacramento for the, we had a CSBA board of directors meeting. A, a lot of information was discussed, uh, including, uh, I guess there's, additional delays on the dashboard or it went back. So there's, there's issue with the, with at the state board in regards to the new dashboard. So, um, more to follow on that. 
Oh, I, one more thing. Um, our pacer is in the works. We, when most of you came for the grassroots, and they talked about the public affairs community engagement representative. They're doing interviews for our representatives, so hopefully we'll have some assistance with some of these issues that we're having. Very nice. Thank you, and thank you for your efforts on our behalf with CSBA and with our local politicians. Trustee Lampel. Yes, I also attended the Quester dinner, dinner auction. It was a lot of fun. And the food by Roberto Rose of the Byron Cafe was absolutely delicious. And all of that was supplemented by fabulous music. And they raised over $11,000 in one evening, which was very nice. On March 14th, I reported the events in Lammersville Unified to the CSD. I reported on the upcoming Battle of the Books, the elementary basketball season, athletic clearance at the high school, farmers markets, fundraisers put on by our parent organizations, um, Heather Corman being named Classified Employee of the Year for San Joaquin County, Wickland's successes at the Science Olympiad, high school speech and debate achievements, the progress of Hanson School, and last but not least, the Magna Award from the National School Boards Association. On March 15th, I attended a planning meeting and I think I was contacted because I'm a school board member, um, regarding community input for the roundabout that's being planned for Grant Line and Byron. The original plan is being changed, and a date for this community meeting has not yet been set, but I encourage Mountain House residents to watch for it and attend so the city of Tracy and the county can hear your input, approval, or objections. The original plan that I heard, I very seriously objected to. Now they're moving it to where the light is, where that taco truck was. That's where they're planning a roundabout now. So it keeps changing. Um, the county has a grant that, that can only be spent on a roundabout. And yeah. Wow. So they'll just put it a roundabout because I, they have this money. So, okay. Anyway, on March 16th, I had also attended the inaugural concert in our beautiful theater with Mr. Pombo and Dr. Nicholas, who predicted it would be wonderful. <laughs> On March 19th, I also attended the WASC meeting with my colleagues, and I'm looking forward to hearing the full report. I know it was presented today. That's way too, too little time to get a report to the board, but I'm looking forward to hearing that. That's my report, Mr. President. Thank you. And just to piggyback on what you said about the roundabout, I'm sure if they elicit suggestions, there will be plenty of suggestions as to where they can put the roundabout. <laughs> I, don't, I don't understand. Could you clarify, Mr. President? Uh, my board report. I, um, I attended the pancake breakfast at Bethany along with my wife, and we had a good time, been on some things, but I guess I didn't win any because they did not contact me. I attended the winter percussion competition at Gregory High School in Modesto, where the Mountain House High School winter percussion team placed first and the winter guard placed second. Both have done very well this, this year. Uh, we also attended the um, Cuesta auction dinner along with trustees Lampel and Clements. I, um, as, as was mentioned, over $11,000 was netted to benefit the students of Cuesta Elementary. I attended the VAPA and, and Athletic Boosters meetings last week. Both seem to be going well. Uh, I, along with my wife, had the pleasure of being in attendance along with others here at the uh, first ever event in the Mountain House, in the new Mountain House Theater. It was a pop, pop concert put on by the music department. They did a wonderful job, and it is certainly a beautiful venue. I'm very proud of that building and the rest of the school. Um, I also participated in both the WASC committee meeting on Sunday and again earlier this afternoon in their report, and that concludes my governing board report. Could I add something? Certainly. At risk of being so grammatically incorrect in reference to the theater, we done good. <laughs> <laughs> it's beautiful. <laughs> Indeed. Receiving of public comments. The board shall give members of the public an opportunity to address the board either before or during the board's consideration of each agenda item. 
At a time so designated on the agenda, members of the public may bring before the board matters that are not listed on the agenda of a regular meeting. The board may refer such a matter to the superintendent or designee or take it under advisement, but shall not take action at that time. The board may place the matter on the agenda of a subsequent meeting for discussion or action. Individual speakers shall be allowed three minutes to address the board on each agenda or non-agenda item. The board shall limit total time for public input on each item to 20 minutes. Seeing no blue cards and no one waving frantically that they want to come up and speak, I will assume we have no, no uh, public comment today. And we will move on to consent items for consideration. Would any of my fellow board members like to pull anything for further discussion? I have a couple of questions. I don't want to pull any items off, though. Okay. Certainly. Okay. So, Mr. Faubert, can you please tell me um, what is the MAD Carnival on May 11th that's listed on the fundraiser list? MAD is our Make a Difference Club. Mm -hmm. So um, they're focused on school culture, uh, and so they're planning after the last rally of the school year to do a carnival. Right now, they're, it's planned for on the quad for students right after the school day is over with food trucks mm -hmm. to sell food to just kind of help kids to stick around and build that school culture. Um, they would like to get carnival rides in the parking lot, um, they're still trying to figure out how to do that, and if they do find, figure that out, they'd like to invite the whole community after the rally to come in and ride rides and have, have a fun mm -hmm. evening. So that's, that's kind of the, the plan for now. Thank you. I saw a fundraiser that was going to help that, and I didn't know what it was. Yes. So thank you. Mm -hmm. One other question, uh, not for you, Mr. Okay. Faubert. <laughs> Um, on the mystery science digital curriculum, is this a supplement to the core science curriculum or is, is this our core? At this time, um, we are in transition and there is no adopted, approved, state approved curriculum that we can be choosing from. So what we're doing is we're using a combination of existing resources, project lead the way resources that we use and a mystery science as a supplement that kind of creates our own RCD type core. So yes, it's a supplement, mm -hmm. but it's being used to kind of make our own core program until we do have uh, things available to look at in the future and make a decision about. So now you're a puzzle master. Exactly, yes. <laughs> Thank you. Yes. <laughs> Thank you. Um, I just want to make a comment, Mr. Faubert. Um, I see in the uh, overnight trips, the every 15 minutes is coming back again. I just can't even put into words how grateful I am that, that the high school is doing that program. Um, as a volunteer firefighter, I responded to a, a traffic collision involving a bunch of 18-year-old kids, three fatalities, and, uh, and the, a drunk driver who was arrested and, and went to Pelican Bay. And I know, I mean, it changed their lives, but it forever changed my life as well. It was a horrible incident, and uh, I just think this is such a powerful program that has such a great message, so I'm very thankful that the high school is doing it. We just did every 15 minutes in my home district, and I had never seen the whole thing before. And I can't tell you how it affected me driving home that night. I could not get those images out of my mind as an adult. I hope this really sinks into the kids. It's a fabulous program. I don't know if, if they said it there, but I actually, when I worked for the police department, I ran that program. I put on three of them in San Francisco, and... Um, in the training, they say that everything in the program is simulated except for the emotions. Those are real. Yeah. <clears throat> yeah. It was very powerful. It is a very, very, very powerful program, and it does get emotional for the students, for the staff, for visitors like I was. It's, it's emotional. And it was the... so moving. I don't want to see it again. <laughs> I really don't. <laughs> Move to approve consent items. <laughs> I'll second. All in favor? Aye. 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 Opposed? Motion carries. Trustee Lempel, would you like to do the honors? Absolutely. I would like to welcome the following new employees to our Lammersville family. Ravina Haya Rivera, a speech and language pathologist, and Melissa Jing Yin Lung Wong, a school psychologist. 
So welcome, and I'm very jealous because I need these same positions at work. So, <laughs> Welcome indeed. Welcome to those folks. Item 10, District Administrative Report, Superintendent's Report. Dr. Nicholas? Yes, so uh, I have a couple of brief announcements, and then I'm going to go down to the uh, podium to, uh, to uh, speak to a, a presentation. This morning, um, word got out that some cool things are going on in Lammersville Unified, and uh, the turkey showed up to deliver the good news. <laughs> so... Um, uh, as uh, Trustee Lampel has, has, has stated, uh, our district earlier or late last year won a Golden Bell Award from the California School Boards Association, and uh, a couple of weeks ago we were also given a National School Boards Asso National School Boards Association Denise Rizzo uh, Award uh, for our Early College Pathway Program. And uh, it was today that uh, the article came out in the uh, American School Boards Journal an article about our district, our great program. Uh, again, kudos to Mr. Faubert and the leadership he's providing that uh, for that for our kids and also in his partnership with uh, Dr. Jesse Garza Roderick uh, from Delta College. It wouldn't work without her uh, support as well. And then um, uh, the last turkey that Heather, uh, we actually caught uh, uh, Mrs. Sherburn uh, chasing a turkey, uh, trying to take a picture of it. And what the turkey announced to her was um, that uh, 62 students for next year's cohort have qualified and only three on a provisional. So that means 58, I'm sorry, 59 students uh, met it by their academic standing straight up. Uh, each cohort averages 30 kids and we have 62 that are qualified. So uh, when I let uh, Dr. Garza Roderick know, uh, she's, uh, what did she say? She said, woohoo, uh, you guys are awesome. So, uh, <laughs> I think sometimes you just got to leave it like that. So uh, we're excited about uh, the expansion of our program. Um, and then um, also, it's, it's a, I had an interesting meeting with the, uh, with the Hansen folks today. So I know it looks like nothing's happening um, at the uh, Hansen project, but if you notice, there's always like dozens of cars out there. So underneath the white shrink wrap uh, around that building, the entire building's almost done. So uh, sometime around mid-April, you're gonna, they're gonna, un they w wish that they could like pull up the curtain and it would go, but they can't. But as they unwrap it, you're gonna see that uh, uh, most of the work is done. Uh, the choice by this board to uh, to shrink wrap it and protect it from the weather has uh, been a brilliant move on your parts because uh, without it, we would have lost three weeks because of the rain. Can, can we get them to unwrap it in the dark at night so it will? We'll, we'll work with that. We'll work with that. I, 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 with the sun? I, yes. I, I'm sure there's no rules about that at all. Um, and then finally, uh, 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 the, uh, as soon as the rain stops, which I believe is tomorrow, and we're going to get a nice little run of good weather, they're going to grade the, um, the fields and do hydro seed. So it'll be perfect. Like the ground's saturated. It's been already the, I don't know, emoluments, I think that's the right word, uh, have put and put in. They've been watering it. Everything's ready to go. So you get the perfect sun and the perfect springtime, and we'll get some uh, growing grass out there. And I think by the end of April, you're going to see a massive transformation. And then also, uh, uh, we believe it's a grand possibility, but not yet promised, that the second classroom wing will be done earlier and hopefully even as early as uh, mid-July. So that was a uh, good progress as well. So um, those are my announcements, and then I'm going to give a, a, a presentation here. Point um, of clarification. Yes, sir. You, you said that was a national award, right? Yes. Um, it is the National School Boards Association, which is the entire nation, all 50 states. We're looking for the Global Universal um, School Boards Association for the next one. <laughs> <laughs> Mr. Pombo and I all have T-shirts made when we go to the national conference. <laughs> um, I had a question about the... The um, next cohort that you said was approaching 60 students. We, the program can accommodate those 60 students. We're not limited to, I know in the past we've had 30-something in each cohort. 
we're able to expand it to include all all qualified students. I don't know the specific answer to that, but just uh, Dr. Garza Roderick's response was the one I was looking for, which is that she's excited about the number and not saying, oh no, what are we going to do? So I will have to uh, look into that about what's available and, and for the space. Uh, we learned a lot with that first cohort um, in terms of you know what types of kids do better and 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 so by the time we this cohort the 62 cohort goes through um i uh, this is going to be a really amazing program uh it's already amazing but i think uh, the things we've learned to how to support the kids is going to is is helping both the the delta and ourselves so we're looking forward to winning the intergalactic award Correct. in the near future <laughs> and the stephen hawking award for global impact um Okay, so, uh, is this, yeah, okay. all right, so Mr. President, board members, Madam Student Trustee, it's my pleasure tonight to give a facilities update uh, on the state of where our district is. Um, tonight I'm going to try to tie uh, an explanation of the complicated agreements that we work and live under to the uh, current planned and future projects in our district, and uh, also tie it to some funding. So, um, so a quick overview of where we're at. Um, we started in uh, May of 2015. Uh, I gave a presentation both here to the board and also to the facilities uh, committee uh, talking about the challenges we faced in terms of the, f uh, the funding we needed, the facilities we needed, and the, and the lack of a state uh, bond to support our needs um, uh, and the long history of, of, of verbal support but not financial support from developers in the community. Uh, a little time a little time after that in February of 2016 I came back and more specifically said these are the specific projects that we really need to finish um, which was really the finishing Mountain House High School building Hansen and some other identified projects uh, it was the uh, this board's decision uh, very soon thereafter to go forward for a general obligation bond. Uh, we made that decision in March of 2016 and on June 7th with a 62.07% approval rating, uh, the community supported our needs, uh, their children's needs, and the bond passed, Measure L. Uh, in September of 2016, we broke ground on Hansen. In November, uh, soon thereafter at the November election, Prop 51, a state construction bond passed. And uh, on June 26th of, of that year, we, uh, we broke ground on, or I'm sorry, on June 26th of 2017, we broke ground on Hansen. So in a very, very short period of time, uh, we announced our problems. We needed to thread the needle for a lot of things to happen, in particular Measure L, a $56 million bond, and ultimately to have a state construction bond pass, and it did. So the basis for the projects that we're doing for funding is very, very, very complicated. But at its core, there's a community master plan. There are mitigation agreements, which happened, started in 1998 with the original. There's a first, second, and third elementary amendment and a third high school amendment. So uh, when you have to try to figure things out in the rules of the game, uh, you often have to go to multiple, multiple amendments and, and to figure out what, what we, did, we agreed to uh, with developers and such. And then there are community facilities districts, CFDs, which um, are the mechanism for uh, raising taxes, uh, for Melarus taxes to fund K-8 schools in our district, and then, of course, Measure, bond, uh, measure L bond, which I uh, just spoke to a couple of seconds ago. So presently, our CFDs that exist in the district, um, again, uh, I want to say this before I get into it, K-8 schools in this district, in this community, based on the master plan, are funded through two sources, Melarus taxes and state matching funds. That's the rules of the game that we live with. So there's presently one, uh, three uh, CFDs, 2002-1, which incorporates uh, neighborhoods E, F, and G, Bethany, Wickland, and Altamont. To, uh, CFD 2007-1, which is uh, Neighborhood H or Cuesta, and 2014-1, which currently um, sits uh, Hanson and Cordes. Um, the high school was not funded through the K-8 model and a CFD model because it was paid for by a combination of developer fees, which I'll speak to in a second, state matching funds, and an old mitigation agreement with the Tracy Unified School District, so outside of the CFD model that our K-8 schools are funded. Uh, in the short term, if we end up going forward with schools in neighborhood A, B, and K, we will make determinations whether we form a new CFD or annex those into an existing CFD. 
All right, I'm going to try to explain this, uh, and this is a, a gross oversimplification of a very complicated story, but the mitigation story that we deal with as a district, uh, for whenever we build a, a, a new school, are tied to these uh, amendments and the original mitigation agreement. So 1998, as I said, is the original mitigation agreement. Then the First Amendment came forward, and uh, that came in March of 2002, and it held on to the original rules from 1998, but it really addressed uh, the process that the district was going forward to unify, going to a K-12 district from a K-8, and it also tied the high school funding process similar to a set of rules from the 1998 original mitigation agreement. That's important because it set up a conflict uh, to try to build a high school without the funds available uh, because not enough homes were built, not enough lots were sold to have money in the coffers to build the school. So that led to an agreement uh, which ties uh, to the third amendment for the high school, which was the fight to get uh, the developers to contribute $52 million of developer fees for the first phase building of the high school, which is a long-term low interest loan, um, which we are paying off presently. In May of 2006, the Second Amendment was passed, and that um, had to do with uh, a change in the law, Senate Bill 50, and uh, a, a dispute about the cost and the responsibilities for paying for K-8 schools in neighborhoods E, F, and G, in particular Wickland and Bethany schools. So that agreement ultimately led to a, the quantifying of the developer's funding obligation. It's tied to Exhibit B, um, but that was the Second Amendment. Now, it's not chronological. I'm tying it to the, to the elementary side of this. The Third Amendment, elementary, uh, is uh, from May of 2017, and that resolved a long-standing negotiation that began with uh, Sunchaser Holdings and ended with CalPERS, where um, two important events happened where it was identified uh, that the obligations for funding schools in C and funding schools in D uh, would be tied to the original rules, which is the um, Melarus and state matching funds. Uh, it also opened the door for using Measure L funds to subsidize the building of Hansen, which was part of our Measure L bond campaign. Um, uh, and then finally, the third amendment to the, to the, uh, to the original amendment, or the uh, mitigation agreement, is the high school agreement, which was in June of 2012. And it maintains the rules that were established in 1998, the First and Second Amendment, but it's really about uh, getting the uh, reimbursement paid back of the $52 million developer fees that went to the high school. So I tried to explain that as quickly as possible. It would probably take a semester of a college class to really get into it, to really explain the whole thing. Uh, but it gives you an, a general understanding of the evolution of all these agreements, uh, the effort of, of this and previous boards to uh, fight for the interests of our students and to get uh, whatever needed to be done, whatever agreements needed to be done to build schools. All right, so the facility funding sources. This is important because for what I'm going to show you uh, towards the end of the, of the presentation. So again, Melarus and state matching funds for K-8 schools. Um, Measure L passed in June of 2016, and it contributes $56 million. We sold all the bonds for that. Um, so we are presently spending that down on the projects I'll show you in a moment. And the basis for being able to spend money is on the Measure L bond resolution list, which was passed by this board and was part of the election process. The other contributing fund source is the state matching funds, which uh, would not exist if it weren't for the November 7, 2016 passage of Prop 51. And in order to get on state funding list, which goes through a very complicated process, um, is what's called a 5004 application and approval process. So we presently have Hansen on the list, and we're in the process of getting Cordis uh, completed, DSA, or DSA approved, and to get on that funding list for state matching funds. And then finally, and this is a very important one, is the refinancing of the original uh, CFD, the 2002-1, uh, which was done in May of 2017. And this is important for two reasons. Uh, there are limitations in what we can use for the refinancing funds. And two, uh, the amount of money that came in because of a very, very healthy bond market uh, opened the door for us to do things that we didn't imagine we would be able to do a year ago. And so um, we were anticipating uh, uh, right around $2 million coming in from the refinance process, and it more than tripled. It actually uh, uh, 
quadrupled um, the amount we had. So we ended up with $9 million uh, that we could fund projects for with contractual limit limitations tied to those agreements that I just reviewed. Um, so for those of you that like to look at these things, in the original mitigation agreement, it's section 2.3. In the second amendment of the mitigation agreement, it's recital number seven. And in the third amendment to the mitigation agreement, elementary version, it's 2.F. So all that to say is, um, I'm going to explain what that means right here. So there's a provision in this that the, the, the refinance money for that CFD can only go for what I, I, I highlighted in green. So it'll include design, engineering, construction, and or expansion and startup costs of K-8 schools. Only those in EF and G, which is Wickland, Altamont, and Bethany. As well as portable facilities, support facilities, school buses, maintenance and delivery vehicles, a district administrative office, a support services center. And if you notice, the second, there's a slash and it's a different color green. <laughs> In the preceding agreements, the amendments, the term a support services center changed to district support facilities. And for us, that's a very positive thing because it, it widens and broadens the definition of what a support facility is. Um, so what that says is what we can pay for um, with that money is what's written there in that list. Now, two important facts. One is projects for that $9 million can go into anything in EF&G and those three schools, Wickland, Bethany, and Altamont. But it's also important to note that the uh, EF&G have a financial responsibility uh, in the agreements to provide funds to support building the high school as well. So very complicated, very dense uh, explanation there. But the idea is, is when I talk about the refinancing of 2002-1, we are very limited in what we can do with that money. So this will be a more entertaining part of the presentation. So I'm going to talk a little bit about projects completed, uh, projects being completed, and projects that are in the planning stage. So these are the Mountain House High School tennis courts, which were completed in October of 2016. The Aquatic Center uh, it completed in September of 2017. The Learning Commons uh, completed in uh, December of 2017. The theater completed uh, in uh, January of 2018. Pictures from uh, last Friday's present, uh, performance. And let me tell you, our music program rocks. And uh, anybody who hasn't seen them yet, they, they ought to go. Uh, Mr. Roxell and his, uh, uh, the people who help and the kids are just amazing. Our uh, professional education building completed in January of 2018. And so what's important about that is this is the phase three that we've been talking about. This is what uh, I think was a major contributing factor, factor to the success of Measure L. So $34 million from Measure L, uh, $3 million from the refinancing of the CFD 2002-1 and state matching funds of $7.5 million are what paid for the, the core building of those facilities. And I put down as a, as a footnote uh, the amendments that support uh, the ability to do that. Uh, professional uh, education building upgrades, uh, the culinary arts, biomedical, engineering, CCNA, uh, computer networking classes, the arts, uh, were received an upgrade. So this board uh, uh, voted to add additional revenues from Measure L to make, those, uh, to make the transition into those, those facilities. And we could do so under the, uh, the rules within the uh, bond project resolution list. These are, uh, as of like two days ago, um, these are the snack bar restrooms at the, uh, the, the, uh, the stadium, both on the east and west side, and the snack bar, I'm sorry, the, the restroom field house out by the baseball field. So uh, those are moving along. Uh, unfortunately, the, the weather, if the weather would have hit about a week from now, we wouldn't have had any problems, but there's been a couple of little, little delays. And again, those two were approved by this board as upgrades um, and uh, to the cost of $2.25 million. And... Uh, and it, again, it was something that's approvable off of the Measure L uh, resolution list. This is what Hanson looks like. I, I spoke about this a little bit earlier, but the, don't think that there's not a whole heck of a lot going on behind the white. Um, but that is uh, soon to be un, un, unveiled for the community to see. Um, and we are on target for our timelines. Uh, Hanson was a complicated process, but again, uh, it's, the cost of the school is approximately $40.5 million dollars. 
that Melarus taxes are funding 32.7 and 7.8 million is coming from Measure L, which was approved uh, by the voters in, uh, in uh, 20, June of 2016. And I uh, just wanted to just reassess to the, or reassert to the, the community, the admin building in classroom wing one will be done in July. We believe that um, the classroom building two has a great chance of also being in July, but right now what we've said publicly is September and the multi-use room will come in last in October, but we believe it will come in sooner than that because they've done a good job staying on, on par. So uh, this board also approved uh, for other schools in the district security cameras in 21st century classrooms, which were uh, uh, technology upgrades. So if you see the youngsters there working on a science project, they're up on a TV screen. Uh, the TV screen and all the technology that goes with it with uh, interactive devices for the teacher, interactive uh, opportunities for kids have been put in at Lammersville and Wickland and this summer at Bethany and Cuesta. And that will catch them up with some of the brand new schools uh, that we have in the district. And again, that was $2.65 million approved by this board and uh, are, is doable because it's uh, listed on the Measure L bond resolution list. The Altamont Preschool is almost done. Uh, we're looking in the next uh, few weeks. Uh, this is what it looked like uh, two days ago. And uh, this is an important one. This one falls under the refinancing of the CFD 2002-1. That is a project that falls within neighborhoods E, F, and G, um, and therefore is completely doable with those funds. About $2.8 million went into that project, um, and that will uh, be supporting a preschool next year uh, for our district. This is the um, Altamont Shade structure. It's an uh, it's impressive big thing. Uh, but uh, it's uh, coming together. will be finished, I believe, at the beginning of May. And that's in the, the quad uh, there at Altamont. Again, it was $550,000 paid for uh, with Measure L dollars. And the resolution list allows us to do that. This is a rendering of Cordes Elementary School. And Cordes, uh, we are projecting, will cost to build the school $41 million. Uh, it will be funded by a combination of Melrose taxes and state matching funds. Uh, we are looking at other m ways to stretch the state matching funds, and we're in negotiations with CalPERS around uh, some uh, a manner in which we can uh, we believe will uh, increase the ability to support that school financially. We anticipated opening in 2021, uh, which would be very close to uh, two years from now. We'll be breaking ground probably next year. And then the Professional Development Center, another important uh, uh, decision made by this board. Uh, we are uh, running out of space everywhere we turn. Uh, what used to be a really large room here in the district office is too small to house many of our, uh, our needs. Uh, taking over the high school multi-use room no longer is adequate. We have so many kids going through there. Um, so we needed a, a specific area to do pro professional development for our staff. And we also needed a place to house our uh, IT department and our curriculum department, or in particular our coordinators. So this building will be on the Cordes campus. It'll be separated by a fence with its own parking lot. Uh, the Cordes campus, again, is a little bit smaller because uh, there aren't as many kids that will be coming from that neighborhood. And that one can be paid for in part with Measure L dollars, in part with the refinancing of $2,002 because it's a school facilities, a support facility. and. Um, and there are some state matching funds that also can be applied to it because, again, it's a support facility. Okay, so other projects that are being planned. A couple of months ago, the board gave direction uh, to uh, have a, a, a warehouse and expansion of uh, district, office, office, district office facility um, to have those designed. Uh, those are currently in the process and are coming soon to uh, go towards the uh, contracting phase. So uh, the district warehouse, we are uh, currently will start advertising for um, <clears throat> who is the maker of the tin that's going to go make the tin building. And then we will go forward with a formal process to pick a contractor. Uh, the expansion of the district administrative offices uh, will come in around $3 million. Uh, will be uh, tied to the refinancing of 2002-1 monies. Again, on the list, uh, you, the very limited list, this was one of the areas is the, the district administration office. Um, so the district office will be expanded uh, sometime in the second half of this year uh, to house what will be the full build out of the, of the, the school community and the people who serve the needs of the teachers and the families. And then finally, the last three, uh, we call it the Lammersville Elementary Facelift. We are currently researching what needs to be done. Uh, state modernization funds can be used for that. Measure L dollars can be used for that. 
commercial developer fees, and we're researching what we can do, what we want to do. It's an old facility. Uh, we want to make it and continue to upgrade it. Um, and so we'll be bringing forward for discussion uh, some of the ideas we have. We'd like to use as much of the state's money to fix up the school as possible and as little as Measure L uh, as possible. Wickland and Bethany, obviously, are, are newer schools. Uh, excuse me, but they, um, they too have a little, little something here and there that uh, could be upgraded and Measure L dollars can go to support that. Um, one of the things on the Measure L resolution list is uh, clean and well-maintained buildings and schools, so uh, we can do some maintenance there. And then Cuesta being uh, a little bit younger but still uh, maybe needing a little bit of cleanup here and there, we can also do. So again, uh, being planned and in the process of uh, moving forward. And then the last slide is uh, uh, very real things are happening with Neighborhood AB. Uh, if you uh, look for the dog ears at the very bottom of, of the map, you have uh, uh, what was intended originally to be two small 450 student schools uh, with the ability in the master plan for us to build one larger school. Uh, we're going to be moving forward with one larger school. I'll talk about that a little bit later in tonight's agenda. Um, the, 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 the name of the school is Evelyn Costa, as from a naming process from long ago. And uh, developer Jerry Camilos wants to try to get on the state funding list, which means we have to go through the 5004 application process. And we are racing to get there before all of the uh, state construction bond monies for new facilities is taken up. The opposite is happening with Neighborhood K, so I want to formally say to the board, um, I, I have communicated uh, with uh, CalPERS through their IHP uh, representative, and uh, they are aware that time is running out for the new facilities, uh, state bond monies on Prop 51. Um, we said that we would be interested in working with them if they wanted to develop that, that community. Neighborhood K is uh, in the, where the little diagonal is in the middle. They're in the process of reconfiguring those communities, but there will need to be a school there. I have been told they want to develop it, but if they want to get on the state funding list, then they, we need to get to work, uh, and we still may not meet, meet the timelines to get it done. So they're aware. Uh, I would warn the board that um, if there's no state matching funds or ability to get them and they need us to build a school, then we're going to be back to some old battles that we fought in the past, which is... You want a school, you got to have Melarus taxes and state matching funds. I do have documents via email uh, showing that we are our interest and that we are warning them that this time is running out. So we've done our due diligence to communicate the concern and the willingness to make it happen. And with that, that concludes my presentation. Questions or comments from the board? Thank you for putting that all together in one presentation. It really brings everything together. Thank you. <coughs> item B, no, that was item B. Item C, district enrollment report. Dr. Nicholas? 4,972 students. We would predict that by no later than June we'll be over 5,000 students. And item D, District Maintenance and Operations Report. Mr. Legrand. Good evening. Thanks for having me. Um, I have a short report tonight. I uh, attended the Altamont and the Mountain House uh, construction meeting today. I had an issue come up. I had to miss the Hanson meeting this afternoon. So uh, I was at the Safety Committee meeting this afternoon. Um, been spending a lot of time on the security camera project, as Dr. Nicholas referenced in the slides. Uh, we walked all, re-walked all five sites last Thursday with the vendor, with Sean. Spent four or five hours going through every single site to make sure we have cameras in the right spot, right cameras, so on and so forth. So everything's dialed in. Uh, we're ready to go. They'll be starting to pull wire within the next week. Okay. Possibly as early as this week, but I'm not going to promise. But for sure within the next week. The, uh, the project's going to go very quickly. I imagine we be wrapped up by the end of April at the very latest. So... They're really hustling on it. We're lucky to have a vendor who actually lives in the community of students that go to uh, Wickland. So the, a lot of the crew lives locally, so that's really going to help us out, help us out on the bid price, help us out on the speed of the project. So that's a good thing for us. 
Um, last Wednesday, we had AV training in the theater for the, the all the fancy gadgets in there. Uh, the maintenance staff and I stayed for the bare minimum, and then we left and left Ben and the rest of the teachers there to get the full detail. We just got the how to turn on, how to turn off, where the power comes from, and we stayed out of the way <laughs> for the rest of it. We don't want to break anything. So we had construction, uh, custodian interviews last Monday, so we hopefully filled the position here in Lamersville, our last opening. It's been open for a while. So I want to personally thank Juan Ramondo. Juan Ramondo is a custodian at Mountain Hills High School. He's been covering this building for a long time, for well over a couple months. So he's been going above and beyond. I'd like to publicly thank him. Hopefully we won't have to cover it too much longer. We'll get someone here that's going to stay here permanently. Um, I met with a couple of principals last week, and I met with a couple of user groups that are having some issues uh, at the site. Hopefully squared those away. Uh, tomorrow I meet with Sean. We're going over summer projects, the two of us, we're meeting in the morning. And then uh, I meet with our grounds vendor on Friday. I gave them uh, not a very friendly uh, review. And so the owner or the, yeah, one of the owners is coming to meet with me on Friday morning. And then I'm meeting with the contractor uh, about upgrading the irrigation system at Lambertsville. We talked about doing some field upgrades a couple of meetings ago. Uh, it makes no sense to do that when the irrigation system is not properly functioning. So that's it for my report. I'll be happy to answer any questions. Go ahead. Uh, not a question, just I wanted to thank you for your participation with the safety committee, um, that you bring a lot of value at those, especially today during the scenario, so thank you. Thank you, I thought it was a good meeting, even though it ran long. Let's get, let's get, <laughs> it was a good meeting though. <laughs> so thank you very much. Thank Anything you. else? Thank you. Oh, thank thanks. you very much. on to 11 action items item a consider approval of 2017-2018 inter intra district transfer requests move to approve second <laughs> all in favor aye. aye opposed motion carries item b consider approval of 2018-2019 outgoing inter district transfer requests move so approve <laughs> second second got to get quicker trustee uh -huh. and <laughs> All in favor? Aye. Aye. Opposed? <laughs> Motion carries. Item C, consider approval of Measure L general obligation bonds, financial, and performance audits ending June 30th, 2017. Staff report? Yeah, very quickly. First of all, um, we discovered there was a little snafu with the copy machine, so we've given you uh, all the pages in this, and the uh, website version has already been uh, double-checked. So uh, just an update on that. So this is the uh, Measure L audit. It basically says that we did what we said we were going to do, and we spent the money on the things that we said we were going to do. It, it had, came with no exceptions, which means that they didn't find anything that we did that was a concern. Uh, it was presented on Monday evening to the uh, Citizens Bond Oversight Committee, and so we've met every regulation tied to Prop 39 uh, bonds, and so we are strongly and proudly recommending that we approve that. Questions or comments by the board? Move to approve. Oh, second. And I wanted to say thank you to district staff for, you know, we just keep putting rocks in your backpack and you just keep carrying it. Thank you very much. Uh, all in favor? Aye. 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 Opposed? Motion carries. Uh, item D, consider approval of new classified California School Employees Association <clears throat> Chapter 873 Job Descriptions, Pending CSEA 610 Process. Staff report? Yeah, so I just want to point out that the, these, these approvals will uh, go still go through the CSEA 610 Process, which allows uh, local and the CSEA mothership, for lack of a better term, uh, to look through and ask questions and, and clarify things. Anything that needs to be negotiated through a through that, um, it goes through a, a conversational thing. But we are, uh, rec because of timing uh, and because uh, of Mr. Harrison's presentation last week, we said we would bring forward these job descriptions. We're bringing them forward pending 610 process uh, for approval. Questions or comments? I do. Um, in reading through, the job descriptions are outstanding, with the exception of the physical demands section in them. It's kind of vague. It talks about ability to carry heavy things, lifting, carrying, pushing or pulling heavy objects. And I think in job descriptions that I've seen, 
there's been a number attached to that. Um, like a thousand that, pounds? Huh? Like a thousand pounds? Um, Mr. Actually, Mr. The Miller? The studio ones in my district are 80 pounds. Well, they're supposed to be 80 pounds. We've reduced it to 40 because we've agreed anything over 40 pounds would require two people. Um, and I think putting things like that in there protect the employee from taking a job they can't handle and also protect the district from additional workers' comp claims. Thank you for the, uh, recognizing that. We also recognize that we are making uh, the corrections to that. And so on the final, uh, the final job description will indicate uh, uh, those pounds mm -hmm. that you are uh, speaking of. Okay. <laughs> and I know the ones that I use, um, we take it from our safety consultant through our workers' comp insurance, and she just gives it to us. And I we reached out to the council, uh, and we've, we've talked about that, so Thank we will you. make sure we correct those. Outstanding job on these job descriptions, and I will move for approval with the adjustments that Mr. Miller is talking about. Second. Are there any further questions or comments before we vote? All in favor? Aye. 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 Opposed? Motion carries. Item E, consider approval, consider approval of new unrepresented classified job descriptions. Staff report? Again, tied to uh, Mr. Harrison's presentation last week in the reorganization of our maintenance and operations department, we uh, recommend these positions be approved. Job descriptions. And same things with the pounds on that? Yes. Thank you. We'll I move do for approval. <laughs> Second. Apparently, I'm getting the seconds today. <laughs> Further discussion? All in favor? Aye. 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 Opposed? Motion carries. Item F, consider approval of new certificated management job description, dis Director of <clears throat> Student Services. Staff report? You know, it's been an interesting year in education, um, and it's made us all kind of step back and, and, and look about how are, we, how are we supporting the kids who need support the most. And... Um, as, as the district grows and the need to support our kids and families in the way that we do, uh, this is a, an area we can no longer piecemeal out to different people to pick up a portion. Uh, so I brought to cabinet and we analyzed this. Uh, it's time for us to bring forward student services as a full-fledged position and we uh, strongly recommend uh, the approval of this uh, job description. Questions or comments? This one says 25 pounds. <laughs> <laughs> Move to approve. Second. <laughs> All in favor? Aye. Aye. Opposed? Motion carries. <clears throat> Item G, consider approval of contract with Edlio for integrated website and parent communication app services, not to exceed $30,969.99. Staff report? So um, we brought forward a new website a few years ago, I think three years ago, which is an upgrade from the previous one, but we did so with E-rate money, and we did so on, on a budget, and we did so on, on the inexpensive. Uh, we're no longer being supported for websites with the E-rate money, so we, uh, we did a comprehensive analysis of our website and communication tools. Uh, this is a replacement for that. Uh, Edlio will be the website. Uh, there's a par parent communication app that comes along with it. So uh, it's time for us to get a tool to communicate what we're doing in the district that's worthy of our endeavors. And so we recommend uh, the approval of that. And this is also something that we discussed at Safety Today. This is something that can enhance um, communications for safety issues as well. So with that, I'll uh, move to approve contract with Edlio for integrated website and parent communications app services not to exceed... Uh, $30,969.99. I'll second. <laughs> but I do have a comment. I've worked with these folks. And just use caution what you put where because there are some sections of the website that only they can change and some sections that you can change. So just be careful where you're putting things when you design them. Further questions or comments? All in favor? Aye. Aye. Opposed? Motion carries. Item H, consider approval of Measure L expenditures. Staff report? So after a lengthy uh, adoption review process, uh, there was a determination, determination made uh, tied to uh, the policy or the committee uh, led by uh, Assistant Superintendent Sherburn. 
Uh, they decided that the best thing for our students right now is to continue using the Eureka Math program tied to RCD units designed uh, K-8. These are support materials that will go with that uh, to allow us to do it to, as, they, as designed. One of us is on the wrong oh. I We were on H, oh. I think. That was the best explanation for the wrong thing. I apologize. <laughs> nice job. <laughs> Heather, well done. Oh, measure L. Yes. Sorry. So um, there's some small projects that we want to bring forward that fall on the measure L uh, project list. And uh, uh, I wanted to bring them forward for approval. Uh, a gas kiln was originally value engineered out. Uh, we'd like to bring that back uh, to complete the art room. Uh, a project to add a home run fence to the uh, softball field, which would come with uh, moving the scoreboard and uh, with some repurposed fence from a project on the south side of the, uh, the campus. So uh, that would be another project. Uh, adding a viewing window in the main gym uh, for uh, the ability to keep people watching the game, but keep them if they're eating food out, out of the gym. And uh, uh, making sure that their trophy cases are of high quality uh, when we do that. And uh, finally, uh, to add bleachers to the baseball softball field and aquatic center uh, that would meet the need of a, uh, a big game and a big moment uh, where we get a big crowd. So uh, those are the things we're bringing forward uh, to be approved for Measure L. Dollars. Questions or comments? Move to approve Measure L, measure L expenditures. Second. All in favor? Aye. 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 Opposed? Motion carries. Item I, consider approval of purch purchase <laughs> Eureka Math Curriculum for TK through 8th grade for 2018-2019 school year not to exceed $204,132.67. And I'm assuming the staff report stands? <laughs> Rewind. Yes. <laughs> yes. Questions or comments by the board? I'll move. For approval of the purchase of Eureka Math Curriculum for TK through 8th grade for the 18-19 school year, not to exceed $204,132.67. Second. Further discussion? All in favor? Aye. 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 Opposed? Motion carries. Item J, consider approval to purchase touchscreen Chromebooks from CDW for a 3 to 1 Ratio in kindergarten and first grade classrooms not to exceed $123,855.09. Staff report. So after a long consideration about what's most appropriate tool for a little people, uh, kindergarten and first grade, it was determined to do these touch screens. So what uh, Assistant Superintendent Sherburn is recommending that we take the current existing K-1 Chromebooks, move them up to second grade to go full one-to-one -one at second grade and purchase these touch screens to go in for the K-1 kids at a three-to-one ratio so that uh, that, that seems to be uh, where people are at, which, which will best help the kids. Move to approve. Second. Question? Question? Yes. Um, I, I, I love the idea. I have found CDW to be expensive. Did we get quotes from other companies? When I speak to that one, CDW has a special discounted price, and there's quite a number of vendors that are on this list, so we get CMAS pricing for it. So, thank you. Further discussion? All in favor? Aye. Aye. Opposed? Motion carries. Item K, consider approval of public disclosure form AB 1200 for California School Employees Association Chapter 8. Seven three staff report. Yes, this is uh, the formal acknowledgement of our agreement with our CSEA uh, folks. I want to thank our negotiating team, uh, Mr. Miller, Mr. Harrison, and Ms. Kaiser. Uh, we also want to thank uh, CSEA for a very positive and classy way that they uh, they uh, expressed themselves during our negotiations. It was over in a very short period of time, very amicable and professional, and uh, we uh, were proud to to be able to help our. Uh, the bottom line for our uh, employees in CSEA. Oh, I'll echo that. I just it's it's nice to see uh, this organization work in a timely fashion. So thank you for that. Mm -hmm. 
I move for approval of public disclosure form AB 1200 for the California School Employees Association, Chapter 873. Second. Further discussion? All in favor? Aye. Aye. Opposed? Motion carries. Item L, consider approval of 2017-2018 seniority list, California School Employees Association, Chapter 873. Staff report? Uh, we recommend the board approve the seniority list. Move to approve the 2017-2018 seniority list. Second. Questions or comments? All in favor? Aye. 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 Opposed? Motion carries. On to item 12, information and discussion. A, technology, technology sustainability plan. Staff report? We, uh, uh, really, there's a tremendous effort put in by uh, Heather and Alvina to uh, upgrade what was the original tech sustainability plan. Uh, this is a first read. They'll do a short presentation at our next board meeting, but uh, I want to acknowledge both of them for doing a, an a admirable job trying to anticipate uh, and timeline out replacement and budgeting for all of the high-tech stuff that we do here. So they've done a tremendous job, and uh, they'll be presenting to you uh, next meeting. Questions or comments? <clears throat> Moving on to item B, water filters. Staff report? Yes, uh, it was brought forward to me that uh, one of the foundations was interested in purchasing a water filtering system that would give kids clean water to drink, um, and the foundation was going to pay for it. And uh, I, after I considered that for a little bit, I thought, you know, if, if we're going to do that at one school, we, we might want to consider doing that at all the schools, uh, adding this filtration process, uh, and it could be funded by Measure L, and the foundation could identify something uh, maybe in, in a more academic or mural type way uh, to improve the school um, and we can do all of the schools and give them a, a, this filtering process. So I wanted to throw it out there uh, conceptually. Uh, if not, we need to let the folks uh, at the foundation know to go forward with their project. Are these whole school systems or the ones that they put water bottles in? It's the water bottle one. Okay. Yeah. I think those are a great idea. Yeah. They, they promote recycling. I mean, they promote... Uh, especially, I just recently heard on the news that the, the plastic water bottles contain small particles of plastic in them. You know, students are carrying these small plastic water bottles everywhere, and then we have a lot of litter and things like that around in the neighborhood, and then it fills up into the creek. So in the, you know, interest of the environment, it's a great idea. In the interest of student health, it's a good idea. It promotes, you know, consumption of water as opposed to juices and other sugary drinks. So I think... Overall, it's a great idea for kids in schools. Okay. Yep. I think it's a very, very worthy place to spend some of our Measure L dollars. And mm -hmm. further, further discussion? Thank you. Item C, CSBA Agenda Online. Staff report? Yes. Um, it was brought. Uh, we're always looking to be efficient and pay a little paperless. Uh, this is a, a good tool that we wanted to bring forward for discussion um, as a possible replacement for, for our very cumbersome uh, copy machine intensive process that we currently use to put together the uh, agenda. So I have a script uh, to that we can follow on the screen to give some samples of what this might look like. So this is image number one. Um, there's an agenda tree on the left and item detail in the center of the screen. The upper left shows the meeting time, date, time, and location. Please note that the address of the meeting is not shown on the screen. The agenda outline report and board packet report generate once the meeting is published and can be found in the upper left portion of the meeting in progress screen. So this is one snapshot. We have another snapshot. This is image number two. A different agenda item, this time with the notes section displayed. A board member can make a private note on any agenda item. These notes are private to the board member and will stay with that agenda item unless the note is deleted. And then we have a third image. Wait, a, qu a quick yep. question on that. I don't know if you know any detailed answers yet. So if I'm previewing my board agenda and I put notes in there, I'm the only one that can see it because I'm logging in. Correct. Wow, I don't need two monitors anymore? <laughs> you have three. <laughs> <laughs> wow, okay. 
All right, and then the third image, uh, this is the same agenda item as above, just the bottom half. If there is an attachment to, the, to an item, this is where the board member would be able to view it. The single item report and the workflow report are also generated once the meeting is published. The workflow report lists the steps that the agenda item went through to make it to the agenda. The single item report is a report ju just on that agenda item. Could, I'm not sure if you know the answer to this, but could um, confidential things be plugged into there so that the board members can see the confidential stuff that goes along with that agenda item? We would have to check to that. I don't know the answer. We'd have to check. Okay. Because that would make it easier not to have to bounce back and forth. And even maybe, a, I'm not sure if, they, if it's possible, but maybe even a, a hyperlink or whatever so that we could go to the page in the agenda that corresponds to w whatever we're right. talking about at the time so that we don't have to switch screens or whatever and bounce back and forth. So what uh, this this is uh, Ripon Unified uses this, and so uh, we have a, a, a screenshot, a, a little bit of, of what that would look like, and then um, so as you would go through, you click. I know that one of the things is on a vote that you would vote verbally, but you also click into it, and then it keeps a record of it. But I think with with a lot of what you're scrolling through is scanned copies, and this actually organizes it where. It's not scanned, it's in there, and you can. it's less cumbersome uh, for you. And obviously, us putting it together, it would save a lot of time, and we could be doing other things. So what we would look, we're, we're looking for is a possible direction to, to pursue this further. Possibly, uh, the cost was 6,000 a year, or six. It's three initially. Yes, 6,000 a year. However, if we sign up within the next month, we get half off the first year. So it's initially. gonna be 3,000 this first year. You had me at hello. Okay. We use Agenda Online for the CSBA board. We don't have the updated version yet, uh, but I did talk to some board members that are currently using it, and they love it. I really like the because uh, the Agenda Online, because it's always there. You can go back to a different, it, you open up, you have a calendar, you can go back to previous meetings, all your notes are still there, so for, you can archive it all, it's, it's pretty good. Another question that you may or may not know the answer to, and it may have more to do with our capabilities than, than theirs, but would it be possible to link this to our recordings from the meetings so that you can look at the agenda after a meeting and click on an agenda item and take you to that, that portion of the meeting? We're not sure yet, so we haven't gotten that in depth with signing up with them, but okay. we'll, we'll for sure There's, ask. They did say something about that through Agenda Online, you can stream the meeting and it comes up on YouTube. So I don't know if that's associated with the agenda part or not. So you anticipate that this is going to save a lot of staff hours. <laughs> Look at Noel's face. <laughs> then I think it would be money well spent. I agree. Okay, so then I, what I hear is direction to, we can go forward with this, we'll bring forward an action item or a consent item, depending on the price here, um, to, to make it happen. But we'll good, take it one next level away from paper. Yes. Okay. And, and maybe we can have some, some answers to the, to the questions we brought up tonight as far yes. as the capabilities of the, of the system. Very well, thank you. So if you were to purchase Let's it within you. the next X amount of time, you said like within the next two weeks, we the purchase it, then when would we be ready to roll with it? How long do you anticipate that happening? Um, when he talked to me about the timeline, he said we can get it as soon as we want, but we were talking about a timeline of starting it next year, next fiscal July year. July 1st, mm -hmm. yeah. Give you guys time to play yes. with it. Your speaker back on. Your mic. Oops. Thank you. <laughs> <laughs> Item D, waterproofing materials and card keys for Hanson Elementary School. Staff report? Yes. Um, I've been, uh, anytime we have a, a consent I don't know how I want to say this. A contingency item that is of, of significant number, I've been bringing it forward to the board meetings. So uh, there are two that have been recommended. One that's strongly recommended by staff and the, uh, and the contractor and the architect. So I'll start with that one first. Um, due to costs at the high school, the uh, POE system, the card key system, uh, is operated on a battery. Um, that was to save money. 
So uh, what we've learned over the time is they work fine until the battery uh, ends, and then there's some issues with the system. Uh, so knowing that we have the choice now with Hansen to choose to do battery or not to choose battery, uh, we are recommending uh, to not do the battery and wire those in so we don't have this problem with technology and locking things up. So it comes with a, a cost, but um, our contingency is very strong, uh, and I wouldn't be bringing it forward if, if, if the contingency was at any threat to run out. So that comes with a cost of $225,000. So it's a hefty price. Uh, for Hansen, but uh, for the staff time, the staff suffering, um, uh, and lessons learned, uh, you pay me now or pay me later. This is this is an opportunity for us to to make an investment now and save time and headaches later. On the um, card lock, you said electric rather than battery. Do those have a battery backup, or if the electricity's out, are you locked in or out? Uh, Mr. Legrand. I don't know the answer. I'm going to say I assume that there is a battery in there. Okay, so we're talking about. I'm sorry, I had to go to the restroom. Sorry. <laughs> no breaks. FYI. <laughs> so if on and Hansen, if the POE system goes electronic, Mr. Pombo has asked, um, is there a backup battery in case the electricity goes off in the in the electric wired POE system? No, there's not. And what the current system we have at the high school is battery, and the batteries are dying and it's frying the brain. So we're going to hardwire the doors and, may, and, and eliminate that problem. I don't, there's not a battery backup, though. So we'll have to go key. So if the power goes out, they can't get into the room, which is not necessarily a problem. Can they get out? <clears throat> yes. Okay. Yeah, because the handles are on the inside. Mm -hmm. Yeah, they can get out. No. So the handles, okay. even if the, the power's out? I think there's not a power in the handle for one or two operations, but as far as hours, no. Mm -hmm. But um, to get back to the original question, if there's no battery backup, you can still access the room with a physical key, correct? Absolutely. Oh. Yeah, and you, yes. There's still a key slot, and you can get out of the door because the handle's on the inside. Okay. Thank you. The second one, um, I had, had sent an email to the board uh, with a better explanation than the original one I gave you, uh, tied to another value engineering lesson learned at the high school, um, which is that this is uh, about out the exterior materials and, and, and doing extra w waterproofing on them. Uh, again, this one comes with a, a, a cost of $225,000, but... Um, they can build it for the price that we were quoted with the materials as they are, which have weatherproofing, or we can upgrade the weatherproofing for this amount, uh, which would, uh, for the, in the long run of the building, uh, save some problems here and there down the road. So because the contingency is strong, uh, you get these kind of recommendations where when you're value engineering things, you don't ever hear about them. So another one for discussion, and I know you've had a chance to review the, the details. So if I understand correctly, what we're doing is putting a higher quality of weatherproofing material Correct. in the hopes that we won't have problems down the road like we had with the lesser quality material that was used at the high school. Yes. I, I, I don't want it to sound like we had a bad deal on that. It's no. just we got, we got stock versus um, upgraded. That's all. No, I wasn't. I wasn't trying to <laughs> insinuate that we had had uh, been built somewhat. How at the high school? What I meant was we had pro we used the lesser quality at the high school. Had problems. The recommendation now is to use Correct. higher quality to try to avoid those problems. Correct. Further questions or comments? Moving on. Item E: Design for Evelyn Costa Elementary School, neighborhood A and B. Staff report. So I just wanted to uh, to let the board know I, it's part of my presentation earlier, but really it's uh, the Evelyn Costa School Project is is going, and we are racing to get uh, a design concept together to uh, get to the through the DSA approval process to get the 5004 application done. Uh, in discussions with uh, Mr. Camilos and staff. Uh, we're recommending that we use the footprint for Hansen. Um, we, uh, again, we're going so fast, but I just wanted to put it out there that we could reconfigure the Hansen 
exterior to whatever facade design style there is. But um, uh, based on what we've discussed, uh, that would be the model that's best. We have already used the footprint for Altamont twice. Um, and the fastest way to get that through is the most recent school we built, even though they still have some code upgrades to do. Um, so I just wanted to let you know that uh, to meet these timelines, it's moving fast. And I want, that's, that's the discussion, is to redo the footprint from Hanson. It's the most modern one, and it, but it still has some, upgrade, uh, some DSA stuff to deal with. Questions or comments? Yeah, my only concern is we're not even side yet. I, we, we haven't uh, we haven't tried it on for size to make sure it fits well, and all of a sudden we're talking about you know a rubber stamp to to build it again. So that would be my only concern is let's make. I, I kind of want to see if the two story works. If that's something that you know um, we're happy with. So our the cost benefit analysis is this: is that um, we're being told that November of uh, of this year is about the time that Prop 51 money for new construction projects are gonna run out. Um, so we have to submit something and it would have to be either, uh, I, I agree, I understand what you're saying. Um, if that was extended out, we would have the time, but this we won't know until August. Understood. Okay. Yeah, I, I share your concern, Trustee Belzerini, but in this current situation that we find ourselves, I think it's probably a gamble that we have to take in order, you know, Sounds like for, for expediency to get in line. Because if we don't get in line, then we might not be building anything in that neighborhood. Yeah, I thought of the same thing. But I also have a certain level of confidence in our architect who has been our architect for several buildings. So, yeah, I was thinking exactly that. We're going to replicate something we haven't seen yet. Um, but I, I'm okay with it. Um, this isn't a question, just a comment for those of us who may not know who Evelyn Costa was. She uh, she was born right down the, the road here in a, on a ranch, lived all her life on that ranch or another ranch, ranch that she moved to with her husband lately. She and her husband were both highly involved in, in uh, school district affairs at the time and she later went on to become a county supervisor, I believe the first female county supervisor in San Joaquin County, and I believe that's a well-chosen name. I, I did not know that. Um, moving on, item F, board self-evaluation date recommendation. Staff report? Yeah, um, I brought, we uh, brought forward a... Uh, a model, a CSBA model for a self-reflection. Um, and then uh, one of the things that is required is there's a two-week period for board members to do the reflection, submit it, them to process the data, and then come up with the report. We, um, there's no science behind this. Thought we'd throw out a recommend, recommendation for a date and uh, give the board a two-week window starting June 15 to the end of June. Uh, to get the, to get, get the process through and then get the report. And that would give us the summer to talk about uh, what the data says and and use that in part to identify goals seems like a good time it's kind of a little, little lull in the action so mm -hmm. okay. the two-week window should accommodate most vacations mm -hmm. yeah we can we can um, look at our calendars when it gets closer and there's a something more concrete to schedule yeah. Further discussion or questions or comments? <clears throat> In just a moment, we well, excuse me, first things first. Calendar, uh, Wednesday, April 11th is the, as I mentioned earlier, the next Wellness Committee meeting here in the district office boardroom at 3.30. Uh, Monday, April 2nd through Friday, April 6th are spring break. And Wednesday, April 18th, is our rec next regularly scheduled governing board meeting here at 7 p.m. If I could add to that, we yes. had a meeting that was added. The next DLAC is Thursday, March 29th at 6.30 at Lammersville. All right, thank you. In just a moment, we will be adjourning to closed session. Uh, we will discuss public employee discipline, dismissal, release, complaint, 
consider approval of long-term leave of absence request by certificated employee number 121845, a conference with labor, labor negotiators, conference with legal counsel, conference with legal counsel, conference with real property negotiators. Move uh, to adjourn a closed session. Second. All in favor? Aye. Aye. We are now adjourned to closed session. Thank you for your Thank attendance. You.